Present anything about Moby Dick. I think it's only a hundred pages, but did you know that Melville's Billy Budd, word for word, is the most important English book, the best written English book ever? A lot of a lot of great scholars have debated this. That Billy Budd, Melville's Billy Budd, word for word, is likely the best written book in English. So Benjamin Britten, being a purist, Every word of this, I've read Billy Budd several times, is, is, is in this poetry. And then Britain takes this wonderful English tradition of coloring the landscape in a seascape, right? Look through the port comes the moonshine astray. It tips the guard's cutlass and silvers this nook. So as a singer, silver, beginning of the, the morn, has the moon just peeked through the horizon. Who's up? Boop, 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 boop. That's a bugler practicing. Or he, Billy might see a bugler ready to make the call from the morning to get the people up for the ship. Okay? So use those colors. In this, you know, in, in, in most operatic arias, we want to show our voice off. The problem with this aria is it doesn't show your voice for the first six lines. You really have to have this kind of English restraint. Look, through the port comes the moonshine astray. It tips the god's cutlass and silvers this nook. Okay, consonants, silvery sound, roll your R's. No, I always say get rid of R's. You, it's English. The only time I'm scared about rolling my R's is when I have American or Canadian. Every other, every other language rolls their R's when they sing. In the, in the vocal, and I told you how we got rid of them before. But we make one flip of the roll. So when you have an opportunity to sing English repertoire, roll the R's there, no. <laughs> okay? Let's hear this. because we're always known as the sound purveyors, the resonant purveyors. So we're always captivated by what the sound we're making. And we sometimes lose the text and lose the character. What is Billy Budd to you about? It's about a young boy with innocence who ends up on, ends up uh, doing, ends up making a few mistakes and it costs him his life. The interesting thing, this is the crux of it. Yes, he makes mistakes. Um, Captain Veer, later on in his soliloquy, says, uh, I can't remember, something about, oh, Billy, 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 
actually says the very opposite. He did not make mistakes. In fact, it was a mistake that he brought Claggart onto the ship, that he was such um, an evil man. So Billy makes mistakes, as all human does, but he never dwells upon them. Is he a Messiah figure? No, not really. He's just the good old boy. He's naive. He's incredibly lighthearted. He's incredibly well-liked. He's incredibly confident. He's just an incredible guy that everyone, and I mean everyone, wants to be around. And you have that element in the studio when you were here. So what I want you to get is I want you to get a bit of Noel into Billy Budd. I want you to find that effervescence kind of confidence, you know? Um, and and uh, just where we left off, I want you to try to find that confident, happy-go-lucky, everyone's in love with him, and, and yeah, just right where we left off. Biscuit ere I go, sure a mess made will reach me the last parting cup. This is about a guy that's going to die, and all he cares about is who's going to be there. And he's got a little, he's got a little gurgle in his stomach in the morning. Oh, I'm hungry. Who's going to feed me? Who's going to give me my last parting cup? Who's the, who's the lad, my best friend? Who, which one of these best friends is going to give me my last supper? Okay. Okay. Find the character in this. Every time I do Billy Bud, every time I go back to Billy Bud, there's something new. Every time I go back to Melville's novels, there's something new. Every time I go back to Benjamin Britten, there's something new. That's what makes this music so difficult, but that's what makes it so rewarding. It's a lifetime of learning. Awesome, awesome job. Thank you. Keep all of the amazing richness. But what is this piece about? It's about overcoming unbeatable odds. Yeah. You never angry with this. Do you ever watch Jacques Riel do this? Sometimes you have to negate some of the classical and look at some of the popular. Jacques Riel is a very famous French uh, Parisian singer who I just love listening to. He's like Edith Pia. He's all these incredible um, emotion to it. I want you to look in the mirror and I want you to give me some of that fiery kind of to dream the impossible. It's about the impossible dream. It's not that it's impossible, but it's a dream. So I need to see that smile and that fire and that inspiration in your face. Because this song is all about inspiration. And the musical theater genre needs even more of that than opera. We can get away with a bit of it in an opera because we're removed from the stage and we're, we're never amplified. But in musical theater, you have to have the Vanna White thing going, you know, fish and chips in one hand, the jazz hands. It, you know, you can, I believe the voice has to be classical. The dance has to be classical. Both my sisters, one of them teaches in the National Ballet, the other one teaches a little group, Berta Ballet, even though we grew up on a farm. You have to have the classics first as your foundation, but you have to overact this. That's what the musical theater is. So really engage with your face. And you're an actor. You're a fine actor. To dream the impossible dream.
I learned this from a Metropolitan English diction coach, and we were doing Vanessa at the Metropolitan. And uh, I was playing the old man in that, and she taught, taught me the trick of putting a shadow vowel mm -hmm. between your consonant and your R. To dream. And you just ended up with one. What was the word there that you just finished off with? The last Bar phrase. Bore. Bore. Perfect example is is the is the American anthem. And the home of the brave. When you speed it up a little bit, that shadow vowel becomes perfect Americanism, but you get rid of the, the terribleness of the R. Because the R, er, puts the tongue back, which stops your vocal tract and your Stradivarius. It changes your vocal tract, which impedes your vibrato. Then you get bad vibrato in your jaw, bad vibrato in your tongue, bad, bad vibrato in your larynx. Mm -hmm. And because you change that vocal space, you feel like you put cotton balls in your Stradivarius. So I really want you to concentrate on getting rid of all the R's. And the home of the body. So that becomes a flick of one hammered brrrr, buddy. Like one hammer of the R. Okay? So try that right there. To bear with unbearable sorrow, to run where the brave cannot go, Excellent. to right the upright of a wrong, to love pure and chaste from afar, to try. And then your back of your throat went. So what you had to do in the next line is a little bit of ketchup. Mm -hmm. The human voice is actually only uses very few muscles. It's kind of like walking in the sense that if something is unaligned, you have to really find a way to get it back. And it causes tension. So weary. Remember the E is created with the molars, not so keep that weary. So in the meantime, you might want to exaggerate that by even opening that E of weary mm -hmm. even more. So just right there, let's try that. To try? To try when your arms are too weary. To reach. Ah, to reach, reach, same thing. To reach. Try right there. To reach the unreachable star. So unlike instrumentalists, we have superpowers. Now that only goes in this room. I never let anybody else hear this. But because we sing poetry, we have superpowers. We can rob the temple. You can guide Olena. And if you guide Olena properly as your collaborative pianist, then you can guide an orchestra. You can really point the words. So right where you stop there, I want you to, I, I could dictate go slower. But I want you to feel the tempo. To me, it's a big part for where you can take your time. What was the word before that new section? To reach the unreachable star. To reach the unreachable star. This is my quest. It's not sad. It's incredibly happy, incredibly inspirational, incredibly hopeful, what we talked about. To me, it's this is my quest. To follow that star. And that gives your audience goosebumps. Okay? Okay. Think about that. It's amazing what you've done in the few years you've been in this studio. You know, just to give you some history, folks, Noel is a computer science major. He has never taken another class in this music building. And he has learned many operatic arias many musical theater arias, many art songs in several languages, starred in roles here, not even being in the faculty. And what job do you have right now? I'm a software developer. <laughs> <laughs> Good job.